Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas, tengan Hello, todos. ¿cómo estás? Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I'm pleased to be your moderator in this opportunity. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of the most emblematic coaches of Badminton Pan Am, Professor Francisco Lacal, who will talk about a topic that have that has been recently studied and whose approach has been put in practice in the new training trends. I'm talking about stroke quality in badminton, basic concepts and their training. Before I leave you with him, I would like to summarize a little bit about our guest's career. Fran is Spanish. He has a long career in badminton in his country. He was he is a former national coach for juniors in Spain, and he was also the first national coordinator for the Cebusca Campeones program in 2005, or looking for a champion program in English. In 2006, he was the founder of the International Center of Sports Specialization in Badminton, and in 1999, he was also part of the Oviedo Badminton Club. He he is a BWF coach in tutor level three. He is he has been an international speaker in late, er, lately. Before leaving you with our speaker, I would like to mention some privileges that we will have in this session. Please, if you have any questions or comments, we invite you to type them down in the chat box, which is located on the right side of your screens. Questions will be answered at the end of the session. We recommend you use headphones so you can have a better sound quality. And for our English speaking community, please find a simultaneous translation option at the bottom of your screens. Without further ado, we welcome Professor Michael de Cal, Francisco de Cal. Hi, Fran, how are you? Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us in your house in Oviedo. Good afternoon, Adrián. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to share this time with you in this Coach Corner, which has, ha, has been having really good comments and as an initiative from Badminton Pan Am. Thank you. Well, microphone is the microphone is yours now. Okay, well, first of all, I would like to thank Badminton Pan Am for the invite. To be honest, I am pleased to be part of this initiative and to be able to share myself as well to contribute in, in such complicated, difficult times that we're all living. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Peruvian National Federation where I'm currently working for, I'm currently working for as head coach and that has and they have a, that has allowed me to, to share some of my time uh, to Badminton Pan Am. I would like to greet all my work colleagues in Badminton in the Pan Am region. Likewise, I would like to greet other colleagues who are close to our sport from Spanish speaking countries, but also I would like to greet especially all my speak, English speaking colleagues who are watching this Coach Corner today. Well, let's delve into the topic. Thank you, Adrian, by the way, for the introduction. Once I got the invite from my dear, from dear Herman, 
Well, I started thinking about the topics that I had been working on lately and which one of these could be an interesting proposal for this format in Coach Corner. So I thought then maybe the objective could be to try to share with my colleagues and all of you a topic that might be that our colleagues might be interested in and that could apply for all our colleagues who work in badminton even with high performance so you can get some inspiration from my ideas and my point of view for your daily training and also from the high performance point of view so this could be another point of view because as you know experience exchange is really important among us coaches now let's get started let's see if i can share my screen and if everything works well all right so quality in, in shots but what is quality if we think about everyday life what do we understand by quality if we look for a definition there are many but a definition that we might set is evaluation of the compliance of certain set parameters that achieve a certain objective now in relation to our sport i think that this might be one of the general definitions of quality that uh, can be transferred to a sport and that's why i like it the most in general terms that was it but now let's talk about specifics what is quality in badminton and specifically what is a quality shot in badminton let's try to speak the same language many times in our sport we should reach to an agreement in order to communicate better very well then from my point of view stroke quality in badminton is linked to many factors one technical te quality when we're thinking about stroke quality we are thinking about the quality in the technique of the athlete all right but well we're going to do some reflections in this time we should also take into account some other factors we can take into account these quality in the technique that might be a factor that has an influence in the quality of the stroke but we should also take into account the quality of the flight of the shuttle once you take the shot and also how these two are related what relationship we find here and there might be different opinions here and i will try to foster participation in this presentation today uh, so the final discussion and q a could be more enriching and different points of view are valid so what relationship can we find if we think about these in, in athletes what relationship relationship can we find between the technical quality uh, and the quality of the shuttle obviously there is a relationship but we might be do a reflection on how close this relationship is all right so we can reach a definition it could be the ability to do a stroke where the shuttle with the right trajectory has the optimal drop for the tactical objective that we need and there are many words here that become more important the ability to do is a given stroke that's one and we have some terms like an appropriate trajectory so we're going to value that the quality of the stroke has to comply with certain appropriate parameters in terms of the trajectory of the shuttle so it has to be appropriate in every case and it should have an optimal drop so this is where the shuttle drops 
before obviously it was uh, it's shot back or returned by the opponent and the idea of having a tactical objective in each one of the strokes well we, we can say that okay the qua the stroke quality but is it is quality stroke is stroke quality really important in performance in the different levels of athletes that we might have how important is quality and do coaches take this into account and how much what impact does this have in performance and we can also ask ourselves when does a stroke has quality and not and under which parameters can we measure this quality we're going to try to, to define or the quality of the strokes so we have to think about the factors that have an influence in this quality if we say that the stroke has a high medium or low quality which factors should we take into account or which factors have an influence in that quality first we have the point of being fact this might be a factor that we should take into account many times as something that pre that limits the technical quality and the tactics but also depending on the angles and physics that we're also going to see later on another factor that we should take into account could be the trajectory as we mentioned before in the definition this will be really or closely related to trajectory in terms of quality this is a trajectory of the shuttle if this is appropriate or not that's another factor then as i also mentioned in the previous definition something that we should take into account is the drop and we might also have we might also take into account some other factors that might have an influence more or less influence depending on the situation i think that the performance factors are always at the baseline many of these performance factors Uh, include and talking about all five factors performance factors might have an influence in quality some of them will have more or less impact of course first the technical factor that is present in this shot in the stroke also the physical abilities and all, all also others that we might not take into account most of the times but in given in certain situations uh, that are more in particular uh, these other factors can be mentioned and one of these is the environment and the other one is the features of the shuttle athletes themselves in certain situations that where they are affected by the envir environment such as the wind or, um, uh, depending on where it comes from it, it, this has an important impact on the quality of the strokes and and at the end this will have an impact on the strokes of the athlete in a specific situation but if we change the environment these athletes might not be able to adapt to that new environment and that's why the quality can drop the same goes with the features of the shuttle in our sport there is very little need to adapt to the environment in comparison to other sports such as tennis where speed changes and there are other things but in our sport there are no not so many factors that change but the the, the few ones that actually change affect the game so the features of the shuttle especially in terms of its speed could be something that can directly affect the quality of the strokes well we could see this from a different point of view as well 
obviously we have that definition of quality which is to achieve a specific goal with a drop and with a tactical objective a trajectory but what can we take into account in that relationship that could exist between quality and the maximum quality possible in strokes with on the other hand the mistakes or errors we can find different relationships there but i assess this from the a risk point of view we can look for quality in strokes we can look for the maximum quality possible in strokes according to the goal that, or the objective that we have but we are always going to be a factor that has a clear relationship with this quality that are the risks in terms of making a mistake this risks these risks um well there are two types of these risks one is the racket of the opponent in direct relationship with the trajectory of the shuttle if we define the risks in terms of quality the racket of our opponent will be one that we have to take into account specifically in some strokes the other one will be the net in two distances why two well the net is a risk and there are two distances one is the distance the vertical distance between the net upwards and the other one is the depth of the opponent's court how far or how close we play to the net obviously in a shot from net to net these two risks include the how high the shuttle is from the net when having that uh, stroke and finally the obvious risk which be the lines depending on the situation with certain strokes this is not so important but in some others obviously it does so later this will have to do with training and to know if we train in situations in which there is an important incidence of a certain risk two risks or even three risks well right well talking about trajectories i propose to think about these two images and think about this question what do you think these are these are images well you can see the source right there these are images done with with a geospatial tool that measures the trajectory the speed and the points of impact and the changes of uh, of speed of something that moves for example this is the final game of uh, the tennis game of the olympic games this is a different sport but this is what we could do here we can see more than 1708 rallies in three sets in a sport that's not badminton just to take it into account what are the trajectories or what could these be in different angles in it on a lateral diagram or on a 3d diagram as you can see on the right side from a different sport this can make us think okay so in general how would this diagram look in our sport in badminton and here i'd like to propose an individual work an individual task if you have a pen and paper at hand just so we can start the conversation at the end of the session we're going to watch a video now i propose you to watch this not from uh and any spectators point of view but think a little bit more about the trajectories try to draw that trajectory from each one of the strokes and also try to look for the different 
objectives of each one of the rallies and when do we think that that rally or that shot has uh, high quality or or not so much in those strokes and then ask yourselves these questions if you want you can type your answers or your opinion in the chat box do you think that in the different singles and doubles rallies both men and women do you do you think that in this ideal diagram like these ones that we see in tennis do you think the trajectories would vary or not in the different uh, games whether singles or doubles so this is a very short video it's less than 10 minutes long so let's try to focus on those things Bien. Eh, Very well then. I would like to know your opinions. You can type your comments in the chat so Adrián can gather some of those ideas. Especially, how do you think this lateral diagram will look? And do you think there will be clear differences? I mean, would this diagram be different in if it were singles or doubles in order to see if this can have a relationship with the training and we can see that later on in the, the session well on the one hand uh, well, first i want to take a one minute break so you can answer uh, 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 this challenging question and also Try to do that diagram showing the trajectories that I mentioned. Very well, thank you, Fran. Well, in the meantime, while you grab a cup of coffee, we have today's question. We're going to make a pause and we're going to test your knowledge in Pan Am Badminton. Today's question is, in which Pan Am Games was badminton first officially admitted as part of the program? And who was the first to win women's singles and men's singles? You can type your answer in the chat box. We're going to give you some time to write down your answers.
Uh -huh. Ya tenemos algunas respuestas para la trivia. We already have some answers. Gracias, Daniel, por tu respuesta. Thank you, Daniel, for your answer. Okay, Max, no problem. Okay, Max, no problem. También ya respondió Antonio Granados. Antonio Granados has also answered. Bueno, veamos la respuesta. Well, let's see the answer. La respuesta a nuestra trivia es... The answer is, well, it was in the second edition of the Panem Games. In 1995, in Mar del Plata, Argentina, the winners were James Dawson from Canada in men's singles and Denise Julian from Canada in women's singles. Thank you for your answers, and now I leave you with Fran once again, so he can continue with his topic. Very well, thank you, Adrian. So I gave you a question. I hope you write down your opinion in the chat box so you can do your own drawing as well. But also tell us if you think that there would be a clear difference and. If so, which between the trajectories from singles and doubles? Let's move on after this short break. Let's continue talking about trajectories in stroke quality. As we said, a factor that we should take into account is one, the definition, two, in the assessment or evaluation. But later we're going to see that the third thing is also in planning. And we have to take trajectory into into account so we're going to try to see the different trajectories that we might see in the different uh, badminton matches according to areas or zones in order to analyze them and see how we can work on that separately so the first thing in terms of trajectory that we should take into account one of the factors that we mentioned before that has to do with the point of impact in the air in different situations so here you can see a diagram i don't know if you can see my pointer i'm sorry can you share your screen again yes one second thank you Well, how about now? Perfect. No, no, no. I was just saying that some people have already answered your question related to trajectories, and we are going to uh, comment that in the answers. Well, perfect. I'm sorry. I thought that I was sharing my screen. Well, this, in this slide, I'm going to tell you about the trajectories according to zones, and here we can see the points of impact. In trajectory, we said that a uh, factor that we should take into account is the points of impact, and this would be a lateral view of, or a side view of the cord. Here is the net, the mid cord, and the rear cord, and here is the tactical zone where we would be located according to the point of impact a priori. An attack zone and a defense zone uh, linked by a neutral zone, and we have a different we have different colors, which shows us if we are defending or attacking. For example, here we have a, a smash in the a rear. In the rear core, we have a jump for full smash. We also have a mid smash in yellow, for example. In purple, you can see zones where you are under pressure when you're playing defense or also the points of impact that we have under high pressure in different areas of the cord in black. So these are the, the specialization strokes, the strokes in the specialization phase that you should take into account when assessing the trajectories later on. So once 
you've seen the approach, I mean, the different points of impact in the different uh, areas of the court, what we can take into account is the different trajectories of those points of impact. So this is a side view as well. This is a sort of diagram of the trajectories of the strokes with the different points of impact. In, on, on the left side, we can see the points of impact of the strokes, and you can see where they landed in the opponent's court. We also we should also about, uh, assess some angles in, ref, in reference to the point of impact and the zone of the drop. How important these to have in terms of the tactical objectives, the strokes, the limitations according to the different limitations of the stroke, you know, depending on the angle, especially when uh, attacking with the net closer or further in the court. Besides the trajectories, we should also take into account the angles then. And these could summarize some trajectories at mid-court. Here, I wanted to detail mainly something that is really valuable in singles, but mainly in doubles. These are most of the possible trajectories that uh, are dangerous, so to speak, in terms of angles, are the red one, what well, is the red one, in from mid-court, because obviously these in, induce a, a following attack, and other ones building an attack, as you can see, in the green arrow, different points of impact as well. Most likely some of some strokes, like in this slide, would be on, in the mid court. These are the points of impact and which trajectories we can get from the rear court, but now we are at the mid court. And we could also go to the front court. You can see the different points of impact, different distances in the forecourt in terms of depth and height of the net, but everything within that area that we can define as a net area and different trajectories defined for the different strokes in different tactical areas, all right? Some important angles that we should take into account would be the angle from the point of impact and the limitation from the angle to the net and the angle of the attack that we can get, especially in the LOB, that will be really restricted because of that point of impact that we can form and the net. And some other considerations, especially depending on the uh, tactic area or the pressure in the case of defense. Well, all of this was in relation to basic concepts. This is what we can take into account, but how can we take these to practice? What things can we take into account that can be useful as a vision or as an inspiration for every level for an initiation stage that we can take tomorrow to training uh, or for high performance? From a training point of view and in terms of general uh, from basic concepts, to me, I think that we should take certain aspects in consideration. The methodology says, okay, control, controlling factors. If we want to improve the quality of the strokes, if we control those factors that uh, intervene in the quality of the strokes, we would be doing improvements. This could be done in an isolated training, in chains where we link part of those factors or we work some we work with some of these factors in an isolated way, for example, trajectory, the drop effect, the position in the angle or the position in the drop and so on, a group of factors that uh, I have been mentioning that we could work in an isolated way or separately. So later on, we can put it all together, we can put them all together and therefore we would be improving the quality of one or uh, several strokes. Another concept that is important to have is a balance management. 
a, a management to manage the balance between quality versus risk. If we are able to assume a high risk, looking for precision in the net or in the lines or in the opponent's court, or when we're, when we're looking for something that's completely different, when it's a tactical situation that requires very little risk, but a lot of precision in terms of uh, security or safety. Uh, far from the risks of the net, of, the, of my opponent's racket, and so on and so forth. So that balance is something that we should take into account when uh, doing training. Another factor is the attention to internal and external feedback that we might design in the different exercises where the player should pay attention to the feedback itself that he gets internally when uh, having a stroke before having an external feedback and also the different types of exercises in which we clearly have an external feedback that is assessing the quality like a, a partner who can assess the quality of the stroke depending on the job or a coach or some exercises that have been designed in order to give an external feedback to the player to, so he can know if the uh, stroke had uh, good quality so we can work with these uh, methodologies in order to improve the quality of the stroke a more advanced factor is the union with tactics how the stroke quality is established within the tactics training and which role we want to give it within a tactics training how how focus how focus should we be on stroke quality and a common uh, recommendation in the in stroke quality or in general is for it to be a realistic training well these are different types of working but we should especially focus on the quality of the clear shots and we should think special attention to the angle and the drop in the drop in the smash in the uh, clear attack uh, from mid-court most likely the point of impact will be a factor that will have a huge uh, impact on the quality of the shot also the trajectory and the risk to the net also in the case of the block for example of blocking we have to take into account the depth of the blocking also the third strike in double especially or serves or when serving now the quality of the strokes in the net there are especially two risks at the net the depth the height and the trajectory as well we can we should take into account the spin the blocking the kills the lobs and the different types of work, for example, we can see a lot, but this could be in two different phases. And we have summarized this in two to work on trajectories in order to practice the precision or the accuracy of the strokes, uh, basic uh, or baseline strokes in the game, and to control distances and trajectories and simple exercises by paying attention, paying a lot of attention on the quality of each one of the strokes in terms of. Uh, the height and distance of, uh, of the, to the net with uh, objectives, clear objectives in safe zones or with specific targets or, or accuracy in lines. For advanced trajectories, we could uh, control the trajectories with a low LOB or lob, which could be non-desirable, undesirable, but with a strategic tactic you could avoid certain type of attacks from your opponent that might seem more dangerous, but we can train some variation of these strokes. In this case, a uh, low trajectory lob. We should also have a control of our angle in our drop. It's lower and shorter to avoid the attack of the uh, an opponent's attack. I'm going to try to finish my presentation. I wanted to leave you some time to write down your proposals in the chat box. 
I'm showing this slide. This is from Jacob, Jacob Hoy in Men Singles. So what link can we, can you see between the game style, between survival and total attack and full attack with different styles? So what relationship can you find in training or in the development of the athlete can you see between the games styles of the athlete. They have a specific style and obviously there's a lot of quality in certain strokes, more quality in some than others. And that's because the quality is high in specific strokes. They already have their own game style or is it the other way around? I wanted to ask you that as well. So you can keep your opinion, all right? Well, that was my presentation. I think I did it yeah, right in, on time. I would like to see the comments that uh, Adrian will gather from the chat box or in case there are any questions you want to make about this topic and that I could answer. You're more than welcome. Thank you very much, Fran. Now we are going to go to to our Q&A section. Please, if you have any questions or comments or experience that you would like to share with us, please write that down in the chat box. Very well, friend. I have been analyzing some of the questions uh, about the graphs that you showed, and many people commented that in singles, trajectory, the shuttle trajectory tend to be more open or straight in different parts of the court and pretty much in straight shots or cross shots. And the shuttle had different trajectories in the net line. Sometimes they were short, sometimes they were LOB or lob, sometimes they were tense and these shots were trying to make the opponent to open the court in order to try to, to Rally. But in doubles, the game tended to be faster and more tight or tense at the net level. And those differences could not be seen in the singles. In singles. And this was more to, to provoke opponents so they could have the shuttle higher in order to attack. I don't know. What do you think about those comments? Well, very interesting, actually, everything. Well, at the end, we can have our own vision. Whatever makes us go to science, such as those slides that I showed. Uh, uh, from our big brother tenants. Well, we can, we could have different hypotheses, but obviously I wanted to propose that exercise in order to make our colleagues think about that how that, what that, that diagram might look like. Obviously, badminton is very specific in depending on the category, but I think that the quality risk and the attention to the quality of the strokes vary depending on the, the game. Probably in, the, in videos, if we see uh, men singles and if we pay attention to the quality of the strokes in the, ver in the very first three, strokes, we see that there's a lot of attention to quality. So they are close to the net in order to provoke the attack. And most likely it would be very different in the first shots or strokes from a singles rally where there's no attention to the quality of the shots near the right, but obviously you're looking for a space and trajectories were not so flat or straight uh, or more parabolic, so to speak. I have a question here, a very, really interesting question from Tony from Peru. It says, would it be okay to leave the athlete to impose his own style and develop his own style when he is learning this stroke technique? Hello, Tony. Well, I think that, well, at least, I don't think that there's some 
Bible that we should follow in these cases in terms of the, de the development or growth of the athlete. I think that it seems like for some reasons or others, that might be related to the athlete's development himself. I think that at a certain point in your in the athlete's pathway, in high performance to be effective, the athlete should define his style uh, regardless of his um, category. So how am I going to uh, win rallies or matches? Am I going to be dangerous or not? Because they won't be able to um, beat me or how am I going to be able to, to damage my opponent or hurt my opponent? So I think that, that has to do with the quality of the stroke. So what are the abilities or strengths of the athlete? And according to those strengths, we should build a game uh, a style of play that can be effective. Okay, Fran, at which age should, would you suggest to strengthen stroke quality in training? Well, in the beginning of, the, of this presentation, that's why I explained why this is an important topic. I think it is important from the very beginning until high performance. Actually, I think that this is what's, how, it, uh, how it's done in practice. Most likely if we see trainings, quality trainings, so to speak, in lower categories, regardless of the factor, because we are focusing on the trajectory and the technique on the risks and the drops, this is present in lower categories as well. But if we go to the first world-class athletes training, we can see that maybe not daily, but weekly, there is a number of sessions where they constantly pay attention to qual stroke quality. So I would say that there's not a specific age, but throughout the athlete's pathway, I think that this should be constant, constantly done in training. And most likely, the whole season, not only in training time. Okay, we have another interesting question here. How can you assess the stroke quality taking into account two aspects, quality and effectiveness? Well, theoretically speaking, we can assess the, quality, the stroke quality as long as we assess its factors. If we assess the point of impact and the technical quality, if we assess the trajectory in the point of drop, we can assess this if this complies or not, or if this complies or not with the tactical objective. I saw another question related to the risks, or what do you mean by risks? When I said the opponent's racket, I'm going to give a specific example. In an attack LOB or lob, at the end, we tried to, to place the shuttle over the opponent so the opponent can actually reach it in order to push him near the back line, so the rear line. So the quality of that shuttle will, will be considered if it goes one centimeter over the opponent's racket. That's what marks the quality, but obviously this will be different every time. So we can do the same stroke 30 times in the same set and the quality of each one of those moments in badminton will be movable. So at the end of the day, this is not bow and arrow where quality is related to the fixed target. But here, this is something that it's live all the time and moves around. So to sum up, we can assess this as long as we assess the factors that have an influence in quality but also if there was a tactical usage or not, if the trajectory of that stroke was useful for the objective that we wanted to, to achieve. Now that you mentioned the risk factor, well, or safety, what would you suggest one or the other in a rally, in a match? When would it be good to play, play it safe? Well, that question, we can discuss that question until late hours. 
and that's always written down on coaches, notebook. But I think that there are different situations in which the athlete needs to play it safe or not, and we can have a very clear example here. For example, a set in which, well, in a singles game where one player is 18 and the other one has 12. Uh, maybe one, the one that has 12 points, 12 rallies, he, he has to uh, take up certain risks. And the other player who has uh, 18 points might have a strategy to play it safe. So it's not like when we play far from the lines or far from the net, we don't play with quality. No, yeah, we do, but uh, maybe we want we don't want to take risks in the net, so we so the core becomes smaller, so the, tar the quality becomes a different target. Gabriela asks, what do you mean by risk? Can there be risk in the front court? But how would you consider this in the mid court or in the rear court? Well, in the net, I think it's really cl clear there are two risks height and distance now in mid court in the mid court it depends on how we can intercept our opponent's strokes and also in singles we have to intercept for example when we have an attack lob and when you don't achieve the, the objective of going over your opponent and the risk in the rear court mainly will be given by the lines one risk or two risks depending if it's just the uh, rear the back line or the lateral line or sideline perfect victor asks do you think that the 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 footwork can also have an influence on the quality of the stroke it will have a direct influence in the point of impact if there is quality footwork if there's footwork uh, quality this impact will be earlier on or higher and that is a factor a quality factor in the stroke so yes it obviously has an influence if the if this footwork is more effective then the point of impact will be more optimal Fran, according to your experience which stroke can have a higher risk when practicing or it, which which strokes you feel more certain i think that it's quite personal i think that it will depend on the moment of development of the athletes if we have athletes with 12 13 14 years old there might be also technical quality so some strokes since they are technically difficult to execute, obviously quality won't be really good because it is complica they are complicated to do. But if we go to high performance, I think that this is directly related to the individualized factors of athletes. They are first class athletes that have really good quality strokes. However, it's some other strokes are hard for them. So I could, could not state um the difference in these athletes it depends on the particular athletes there's an interesting question here from cindy she asks if you think the strength in fingers as an influence when manipulating the racket grip in order to be more effective well i would say most definitely in some strokes that aspect is very related to technical quality. For example, there are usually two types of, of, stro of strokes. The same goes with painters. There are painters that paint walls, but there are others that paint um, pictures. So, in order to have a high quality, the need is clear. 
you have to have fine coordination in terms of fingers and that's related directly to the technical quality that we're going to get in the execution of the stroke so it's the same as we mentioned before the footwork is re related to the technical quality also the fingers have an influence in technical quality and that's a, a factor of stroke quality okay antonio rojas also has a question an interesting question how can you train the stroke quality i mean is it better for these to be repetitive for example to do 100 um, repetitions until you improve or is there a different methodology that can improve that quality what do you think well i think that well i mentioned some methodologies in the presentation but there are different methodologies in order to train each one of the factors that have an influence in the full quality so to speak i think that the repetition factor in badminton is uh, used a lot for many methodologies or once you are you could use it once you are in an advanced stage of the learning i think that if we repeat a lot the same mistake then that's not appropriate first we need to look for a baseline a quality baseline in the exercise that we're doing so later on once you get to an advanced stage of learning you can try to um, solidify that concept based on repetition but first you need to do an appropriate assessment of whatever the exercise is depending on the type of methodology that you are using so later on you can go to the repetition and it mentions if you would consider deceptions as part of the strokes that should be trained in terms of quality. Hi, René Madrid. I would say that deceptions are part of the game. Besides, in juniors, kids think that this is super fun. I don't think that you needed to wait to exercise this in training at any point in time. I think that this is part of the fun, so to speak, of uh, juniors. And I think that at the end, these strokes that deceive should have, should, uh, have quality. At the end, if we actually deceive our opponent, making him think that, that the stroke will go to one side of the core, but at the end of the day, it goes to a different one most likely that it's not only about the deception but at the end this the shuttle has to go to the exact zone that we want it to go so the quality of the strokes uh, should be exercised uh, in all different factors the, in terms of the quality of the execution of that uh, the deception just as in any as in any shot or stroke thank you frank well time's up I don't know if you, want, if you want to send a final, if you want to say a final comment for our audience. Well, actually, this has been a great experience to share with so many participants as I see here from the Pan Am region. Once again, I would like to thank the Badminton Pan Am Confederation, first of all, for this initiative in these times. It, it's important for our sector. I think that it's being a successful point to place to meet i have been following other presentations from my colleagues in uh, Pan, badminton panam's channel and i think that its initiative has been very good and i hope that we can take something positive from this I think this initiative is something positive that we can draw from in these difficult times uh, worldwide and nothing, just take care, uh, be safe, as well as your friends and family. Thank you very much, friend. I would like to thank you and thank, uh, thank you to 
everyone from Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Santa Lucia, the Dominican Republic, well, many other countries as well. As always, I would like to thank you Thank you so much for sharing such in, interesting information. And as always, it's great to have you and to discuss with you these new topics that we are seeing in, in badminton currently. I want to say something, Adrian. There is no problem, but I'm sure that the badminton Panam will uh, be able to share a summary of this presentation and also a proposal with 100 exercises in order to work on the stroke quality that I'm also going to share with you so our colleagues can use them in case they think that this can help them with their daily training. Excellent. Thank you so much for that supportive material. Uh, we expect to receive it. And to our audience, please help us to improve the quality and content and delivery of this uh, course by filling this quick poll anonymously. To our badminton family, we invite you to the next session entitled Transitioning to High Performance in Badminton. This talk will be given next Tuesday, uh, June 9th, where we will have the pleasure of having Professor Marco Vasconcelos from Portugal, who has done an excellent job with badminton in his country, Brazil. We encourage you to write to us and to propose topics that you are interested in now. Please write those down in the chat box located on the right side of your screens. We invite you to check out Badminton Panam's YouTube channel where you will be able to see, to watch these and other conferences that we've done. On behalf of Badminton Panam, we thank you for participating and we hope that, this, that you like this session. Greetings, stay well, and see you in next session. In the